And that means that we're going to see a support Marana. Support Doom. And a support Doom. So they're going to run Jungle Doom. It's actually really, really smart that they did this after DK pick up an Enigma. DK's early game potential for ganking is really, really low. Like, Skywrath Mage is kind of like one of these guys which can change things around in a lane, but only when you're caught out of position. Mm -hmm. Now, you're running a support doom, you've got an offlane puck. Really difficult for Skywrath Mage to kill off the puck properly. Obviously, if he can get his timing and the seal right, but you're still going to have to worry until you're, like, you're level 3 for that. And Puck is still a very elusive kind of hero. Yeah. Um, but how is DK going to lane this? Is this meant to I be you were right, an but... offlane call? Or jugger? No, no, I think the Juggernaut... Oh, actually it is! Ice Ice Ten Ice Offlane Juggernaut. Safe lane Naga Siren, and then mm -hmm. Miss Storm. Uh, now, I'm liking the fact that I was right about the Juggernaut. What I'm interested to see is if DK really won... Because the Troll Warlord was there, and because it got banned out, I think that might have like changed DK's plans as like how they want to progress Prepare through all of this. But either way, uh, we are getting ourselves into the game. So we can welcome in the live stream as well as uh, you join us here in the commentary box, or in this case, a room of wonderful people, as we have DK versus C9. The winner of this full best of three will go straight into the winner's bracket to play a key arena here in Seattle in a few days' time. And they will be able to have the easier path to the grand finals as opposed to fighting out through the lower bracket. I, I, I do just want to just uh, give a little bit of a asterisk to that DK stat that just popped up. Mm -hmm. The other time that DK faced against Cloud9 was when Cloud9 was speed gaming at MMG Columbus. And that was uh, the grand finals where they took 2-1. So these two teams definitely have a re very rich history together. And I'm going to just say that DK don't really like Cloud9, uh, simply for the fact that they, they took that <laughs> MLG Columbus. And this, this is a match not only for you know the main stage, it's also a very big grudge match. Yeah. Hey, well, this is a different lineup, man. Artizi now defeated on land in America. There you go. It's, the story is real. Uh, so yeah, let's let's quickly go over our lane. So we thought Ice 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 was going to go off lane. I was wondering if he'd have support from uh, MMY as a Skywrath Mage, but it looks like they're going to send him up towards the top lane to support Burning, who's farming up as the Naga. Mushi, no surprise whatsoever, Storm Spirit in the middle begins. lane. And uh, Lanham, he's actually got smoke already with Sentry Wads. It kind of feels like a bit of a... Uh, like a, like a bit of left column, one, a little bit of the other columns, like, am I looking to jungle? I've got three clarity, so I assume so. Mm -hmm. uh, but then he's also got smoke and sentry wards. That smoke might actually use for the level one Roshan. You could actually solo level one Roshan as Enigma by yourself. We don't see that in pro games too often, because if you do exploit it, you could steal the Roshan, kill Enigma, and just, you know, it's is, table turns. Is three clarities really enough to do that, though? You're probably, if you are going to go for the Roshan strategy, you need to get a Medallion of Courage. And you need to get a Ring of Pasadia, so Which means you can't do level 1. <laughs> well, no, 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 you definitely don't do level 1. You have to do like a level 5-ish. But okay. you can solo it. But yes, yes. Yeah. It's down the road. Yeah, okay, okay. You, see, you said level 1, I'm like, wow, really? I was like, I've never seen a video of this one. Challenge now accepted for level 1 Roshan. Uh, but yeah, our lanes, as far as we look at them, Bone 7, the off lane. Burning's not really going to be able to do a hell of a lot to Bone 7, so it's really up to MMY to make sure he's the one that's adding pressure towards this Puck. But then again, Puck come, came up with a lot of consumables. Yeah, Puck should be fine, especially that he's got an instantaneous level 2. Can't really zone him out as a solo range hero. Uh, the early important thing that we didn't talk about is that Cloud9 did not put wards in the Dire Jungle, whereas mm -hmm. DK did put wards in the Radiant Jungle. And having the Radiant Jungle free is actually a big part of AUI's jungling plan, plan because he really wants to tackle the big camps and then keep eating the big creeps. It's actually going to be okay for him, however, because like the, the camps he's searching for... Actually, have they even... lane, looks like we're going to see a proof coming in here. Mushi eats a Sunstrike as well, just mm. a little bit of early game for us. But Sing Sing, once he gets that second Meepo, in fact, he has chosen to not level the second Meepo level 3. Really? He I'm not a Meepo master myself. He went, he went for the proof. Yeah. It's kind of interesting though, like maybe he's giving a little bit of uh, respect over to the static round because there is one nice thing about Storm Spirit, he does have some AoE control. Like when you're really tight together, and so you start splitting up your Meepos when you're looking for farm that way, it's not really going to be, yeah. Um, yeah, but, but back, to you, back to the jungle before we are talking about that. There's only one camp technically that doesn't, that doesn't spawn. It's yep. this one right here. This is the only camp that doesn't spawn. And as far as the Doombringer goes, as long as he can still move between these small camps in the middle lane, there's no real problem for him. His jungle progression, obviously, he can't have like that extra one. Boat 7. Oh, there's trouble up on the top lane. He's going to orb himself back underneath the range of the tower, but the last attack won't be enough. 
He'll salve up and get himself away from burning an MMY. Yep, and burning is starting to run quite low in terms of mana, so it looks like we're not going to see a kill on the top lane for quite a while, unless burning gets a quick clarity from his support or whatever. I thought that's been having a fun time in that bottom lane. He's managed to pick up 8 for 2. The DD yeah. runes helped him a, a little bit out in the last moment. But considering, like, you've got pull-throughs in from the side, I know a couple of those kills also were the camps when he came over and he tried to contest it. And with a PMS, like Pilot Eye, his damage does nothing to Ice Ice Ice. Yeah, it, it, it's just a byproduct of the fact that we have essentially 2-1-2 two, two lanes with one jungler. The off lane's actually going to get quite a bit. Oh, middle lane, there's your Earthbind, and now for the double poops and the Sunstrike. Mushi is a lot of damage, one more hit! Oh! The Santa Blast comes out from Doombringer! <laughs> it comes from Aoi 2000. I'm gonna say that actually the kill going on the Doombringer is quite much bigger than going Sing Sing. Sing Sing's gonna find his farm, no doubt about that. But your support jungle Doom getting that kill is gonna accelerate him to, I, I, I guess, a Hannah Midas if, if that's what he's looking for. Well, what is he looking for here? Like, it kind of feels like he's probably going for Arcane Boots. So he just becomes like that supporter for the lane. Because Meepo is spamming out a hell of a lot in that mid lane at the very, very start. I'm pretty sure Sing's gonna need some help there. Yeah, also Aoi, very interestingly, Soul of Smokes as a Doombringer. Not What's exactly. He? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what he's doing because he's got nothing to attack with. Like he, do he doesn't have level six. I think they're gonna go for a secondary kill on the mid because Sunstrike as well as things like Net and Poof they have very low cooldown. And it looks like they're gonna oh. make another go here on. Oh well. Uh, Bone Seven's also up here as well. And it's gonna be a regeneration oh. rune. Mushi, Mushi what a is gonna actually he's denied the ball. Look at Sing Sing. He's on the high ground. Earthbind one, Sunstrike two. Look for the blast. It's coming from the Invoker. It's a perfect execution there from C9. The weird thing is Mushi had to know that. But then again, where was he? He had to run north. He had nowhere else to run. Because Sing Sing went up this way. Yep. He literally walked up through the middle lane and then just camped this top area. I guess, I mean, he could have ran, like, you know, up the up to the top lane direction, yeah. but... Yeah, yeah, to actually come up where, like, Lanham and MMY are currently smoked up. Because if you look, if you checked Puck, you would have realized the Puck had nothing. Like, Puck had no mana. They make yet another dive here. Well, so we're going to see going to. Doom's going to come in. He Blast still him. has a creep. Sunstrike's going to come in. And that's going to be the kill. Sing Power Sing. is going to die as a Sing result. Dead. Sing Sing's dead. MMY's in through the rear. Attacked him perfectly to make sure they get the kill. And Aoi 2000 out through the trees. Lanham, he's got Malefits available. And they seal him up. The arrow flying in. Connects on MMY. But MMY has already picked up the double kill, getting that last attack off. Meanwhile, Ice 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 is giving the beatdown to Pile I Die. Pile I Die does not have leap anymore. And interestingly, Ice 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 didn't go for the spin, would have done a ton of damage. Yeah, he, 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 maybe he's just trying to protect himself as well. Like, Pile Die doesn't have leap, but Radiant if Eternal Envy turns out, around here, attack. and he comes in and there's an, like a single arrow that connects on him, and he doesn't have a spin available, like, that's going to be a massive problem for him, and could actually be his own death. And so far, he's been playing a really good offlane. He's four and a half levels over on this Juggernaut. And that poor man shield of his is still working overtime as he gets a, uh, a rather late stick. Five minutes 30, and maybe he's a little bit too far up as well. Eternal Envy, like he's actually not even leveling up Cold Snap. I thought for a moment he might invoke. There we go. He's invoked Cold Snap now. Yeah. I do want to point out Eternal Envy's skill or item builds here. Normally when you, he, when you see him play the Invoker, he always goes for the Hand of Might at first. In fact, he rushes it quite uh, early without getting much regen. But this game, he's pulling a page out of Luol's playbook. This is Luol's Invoker build. Phase, Quick Orchids, and what he's looking to do. Oh, oh he's nice. like a ganked here. What a bait! They use the Healing Ward to try and bait him up a little bit further. Eternal Envy, he's still on only Exor, and he's down. He's down for the count. Aoi 2000 though, as well as Sing Sing, are trying to search for another kill. Mushi, a good time to static remnant inside the inside the Roche pit. They are preventing Mushi's level six very admirably. Look at Aoi, he's dropping a ward behind the tier one mid. <laughs> Is Mushi ever gonna get this level six? <laughs> he's he's trying to see up as well. Like he's just throwing static remnant after static remnant to make sure he can see. But Aoi is perfectly in, in perfect vision there. They need more help. He fortify as well, MMY. He can't Dyer's kill Aoi from the low ground, because Aoi's still got two points scorched earth and the regeneration that came out from that setup. They'll move up and Mushi goes on him. They're pulling him back in, but Earthbind, double proof, arrow as well. Mushi evaporate Aoi 2000. One last out of blast before he goes down, but giving a double kill over to Sing Sing is well worth the sacrifice of the Doombringer. Yeah, and the first kill actually happened before Aoi died, so Doombringer got the experience for that as well. My question is for DK, were they getting really the trade? Because if you look at the top lane, Bone Seven still sitting there, he's already got level 6. Enigma's farms, alright, Enigma's farm is really the trade, he, he's almost got the mech finish. But they really need to do a lot with this mech to make all of this early game worth it. The score is really close, 5 to 4, but I can't help but feel that Cloud9 is really advantaged at this point in game. I'm wondering if that mech really does do anything. 
Like, when you consider how much like area of effect damage you can pull out, I know we're not looking at high levels from the Marana because there's only one level of Starfall, but you can have, I guess, I'm shielding a two points orb and two points rift as well. Okay, I'm, I'm really underwhelmed by the uh, by the attacking power of this uh, two. Lane. Looks like Marana, he's trying to make a gank, but this Observer has actually scouted him out. The Song's going to use to initiate. Or are they going to actually burn. combo into. They have Ancient Seal. You got to get that off instantaneously. The no! ult comes out. He's out of there trying to TP. The no. burst damage is way too high. DK gets a very important kill. Meanwhile, Pilot died. Leap. He's still scouting it out. Leap. All right, he leaps. <laughs> Again, Juggernaut had ulti that he could have followed. I I think the cast range was too short to actually go down the cliff with that Omni right. Slash. But but if, if he started before Pilot Eye jumped, and he had perfect vision, like yeah. Pilot Eye was literally he had a ward on the tail of his of his Panther. Well, that was a fair, fairly important kill. As any kill at this point here, you just need experience for DK. They they are a very experienced starved team right now. It looks like they're going to try to push a tier one. Enigma putting a, a, a big part of that pushing power, but you gotta keep in mind that Puck, one Radiant of the better tower defenders with his uh, AoE nukes and that Dream Coil. Mm -hmm. They're actually, with fortification being used, arrows coming in, hit a nice little five second one there on burning, but the healing Radiant's board is still there from my side side, and this is what they're trying to really capitalize on, the fact that you can just keep pushing. And you don't lose any life for it. The trade off is, however, Eternal Envy missed the one Forge Spirit because he's still attack. short that one extra Radiant's point up in Quas. He's adding a lot of damage towards the tier one tower bottom lane. The mid tower is also taking a lot of fall. Dyer's and Sing Sing, okay, that Sun Strike was able to connect on Mushi as he is walking back in towards the middle lane. But Sing Sing's got a DD route. He feels so invincible right now. Now, Earthbind, Mushi, he has his ultimate. Dyer's but of course, by zipping himself fallen. around, then he cannot keep the pressure up. And he has to back up and lose the tier one tower at the same time. Yeah, earlier, Toby, you were asking, what does the mech really guarantee for DK? I think it guarantees just this. It's really hard to fight into DK. What is the initiation coming from Cloud9? They have to fuck with a Dream Coil, but under the healing ward and, and the mech, there's just way too much healing. Yeah. It looks like DK's going to pull back right now, but they did a, a gigantic amount of damage to that tier 2. And the next time they push, it's going to be fairly easy. I'd almost want to see a bit of a switch up right now, uh, where you can have like the minions of the Invoker fight on the top lane. Because my major, my major concern right there was the fact that no one from C9 could basically walk past this line to get anywhere near that tier 2 tower, and the rest of the minion army of DK was a little bit further up in the lane here. Mm -hmm. So you, you can't push it back except with orb, and three points, dream, uh, uh, three points on the illusionary orb is not enough damage. And they need to buy time for Sing Sing. Sing Magic time for initiation is one well, after he's finished Agonims, which is 1200 gold away, and when he's got Bling Dagger. Now the smoke is breaking, and Pilot Eye, he's giving the sacrificial lamb right now. He's caught it out inside the Radiant Jungle, but it's better him than Owie, Envy, or Sing Sing. Or anybody else. I mean, it's actually like he's the least uh, important kill, I think, for Cloud Knight. Yeah. So I, I think. Sorry, I, think I, I didn't get to include Lone Seven in the list yeah. of people. <laughs> Lone Seven will TP to the bottom lane. He is in Viz, though. So, and they didn't TP with. I'm not sure whether you want he to can, fight into this. There, again, I'm, is Mech and Healing Ward. But with a Dream Call and with a fight, I reckon they could do this, man. Three man, Lanham. They gotta make sure he cannot get this black hole off. Earthbind, and in comes Sing Sing. The extra boost. And the. Oh, wow, that Mystic Flare doing some decent work, but not enough. Sing Sing getting spun down. And Mushi is able to drag back the Meepo, but they'll keep the fight going to Wide Side Sides on the call snap. He's out of his immunity, so it ends up being a two for one trade off. And Mushi gonna TP himself away to safety here. This is almost the time when C9 had to add some pressure and finally bring down that tier one tower in the bottom lane to make these TPs worthwhile. Yes. Because you gotta keep in mind that even though DK lost that fight, it's essentially 5v4, with the most important hero still farming up top, burning already at 3,300 gold. Once he gets to the Radiance, this becomes a totally different game. It becomes, can you pick off burning? And really, Dyer's it's gonna be difficult to do so. They fallen. also need to teleport and defend top. Radiance and you can see that Sing Sing is doing just that. Yeah, it's the money he really needs now. They actually set him back, and they, he lost about 400 to 500 gold uh, by having that death. And not to mention all the time to farm. To farm. We'll end up done nine that top, top tower, tower as well. Has been denied. The Sing Sing needs this last... Actually, what is now only, like, 1,000 gold. 1,000 gold and he gets his Aghanim's upgrade. Yep. And that's going to be the first step. The second step is C9 being able to initiate without having to hope an arrow connects or have an invis rune on a puck. Once that happens, DK is going to be really, really cautious about things. Uh, we're going to see yet another push coming to the bottom lane. They still have Black Hole in reserve. Storm Spirit does have the tread, so... Actually, Storm Spirit is going to be a part of that shadow for this fight, however. Like, Pala is about to crack level 6, so... Well, so, so they have detection with them? 
There's a sentry ward in the lane. All right. I'm not sure if Moonlight Shadow could be used as a tool to initiate, because it's somewhat dangerous, like, especially if there is uh, sentry wards down. It'll be the a very heroes of New Earth thing to do. I remember when Fnatic first switched over from Hom to Dota 2, they're always just like level six hits, and you just pop that. You yeah. walk in close and you just nail them. They, they're doing it right now, and they're walking forward. Unfortunately, there is nothing to walk into. No one there. Yep. In fact, they brought all five heroes down here. And they walk past sentry wards too, which means they're instantly revealed. So normally when, when the game goes to where Naga Siren picks up the Radiance, the game becomes, all right, can you can you push out the Radiance wave? Can you kill the Naga? I feel attack. like this game, Cloud9 is actually quite equipped to do just that because one of the game's best split pusher is Meeple. You could just blow up the wave quite easily. You can even blow up the Naga illusions, at least in the earlier portion of the game. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, you also have Doom, one of the best late-game farmers, at least, in terms of accruing growth through his Midas, as yeah. well as Devour. So, in terms of goal input, they could pick him up. In terms of the split push, uh, they could also keep it up. But the thing is, how do you break high ground for, uh, for DK? I, I think DK is very well equipped going to long and late games, and uh, they, they have the heroes and the towers. The lineup from DK, like for me, the the breaking high ground is either going to come through decision making, which by the way up on top lane, burning decision to die, uh, it's going to be high. Sun Strike, and she managed to evade it too. I don't know if Sinkin's gotten really enough damage to finish this. He brought in the extra Meepo, and then to a second Earth Bind, no oh, proof oh, left, oh, and oh, one oh. more attack on burning. He was microing his other Meepo around the corner of the trees. He wanted to make sure he blocked him there. And now DK, well, they will take this bottom tower. There is nothing that will stop this push. So C9 just try and get the trade in the tier one on the top, but they won't be fast enough. Yeah, that was a kill for Cloud9 in the sense that Burning already picked up the Relic, it needs the Radiance, and uh, Burning gonna find didn't... This? Well, are they going to find it? I think they're going to try to hold as long as they can, and maybe even cancel a couple of TPs, Radiance but Tier 1's going to go attack. down. Radiance and I think that, I'm not sure whether that's secure the T1 top. Glyph has already been used, but it's very hard to TP into this tower yeah. when there is a Meepo waiting for you with the possibility of an arrow hitting you as well. So it's a essentially trade. a tower trade, but the question is, is DK going to stop pushing the Tier 2 Dyer's bottom now? Top tower has fallen. Uh, they probably should. Meepo has Axe. Meepo's actually got to go back to base right now so he can pick up the Ag and Scepter. Looks like they will. So essentially, it's a tower trade with Cloud9 picking off of Naga Siren. A big win for, for Cloud9. Yeah, and Dyer's the first Blink Dagger for Buck. Is this, this is the initiation I was waiting for from C9, and I'm really, really interested. The way, reason why I'm interested in wait for it is because I want to see how DK handle it. You're going to have jumping heroes coming into you. You're building a BKB onto an Enigma, which is also interesting mm -hmm. and the fact that storm spirit mr treads first has bought a point booster now if mushi really wants to go a bloodstone on this that's kind of okay but i'm surprised he didn't go like arcane boost and decided to actually go through the tread build instead yeah because this, this delays everything maybe if, maybe it was a judgment call like he started thinking that he wants to go orchid so it's like all right let's finish treads and then thinking oh the game might go long let's go bloodstone instead but yeah very interesting way to build that particular item uh, I, I do believe that the suggestion that you made about going Arcane first makes more sense. Definitely more efficient. Yeah. It's also a bit more standard. Yeah. Uh, but for now, uh, DK going to back themselves up. I'm, not, I'm also not quite sure about DK giving them the space. Like, okay, C9's getting a lot of initiation abilities, but they're also, like, really, really uh, efficiently farming. Like, you got a Hand of Midas, a 4-level Devour Doombringer. Just by himself, like just give him two creeps every, every minute or so, and uh, and he's really good to farm. Sing Sing is actually being really defensive with his meepos, keeping him in the tree line a hell of a lot, uh, especially up here on the top lane. He's always had like this little gang squad next to the secret shop up on top, and uh, then they come out and push when the creep wave gets far enough. But all of this is like good, really, it's really good split push farm. Invoker is able to do, well, whatever farm he wants to. He's going to farm up heroes later on. But all I'm thinking is right now is, is DK really being that efficient across the map while they wait for C9 to come? Well, I think it's more so they, they kind of... This is the play style with the Naga Siren. You, you don't pick a Naga to go for a 20-minute push. You pick a Naga to extend the game to the 40, 50, 60-minute mark and, and win late. So I think I want to say this is what DK drafted for and this is what DK's playing. But it makes sense that they're holding back. And it's not that they're passive about holding back. You see that they're constantly smoke ganking into the enemy jungle. In fact, right now, Lamb, as well as the rest of his team, is stealing farm from the enemy jungle, which is exactly really what you want to do. Uh, meanwhile, in Cloud9, they're not doing anything of that sort. So DK, if this keeps up, DK is going to have to go lead. 
Eventually. Eventually, yeah. Bottom lane right now, they're going to see if they can force out the tier 2 tower. They've got some wards also that were originally meant to be aggressive wards, and now they're just keeping track of anything happening behind them. That Forge Spirit, did, he, did Envy just actually, yeah, he forced off his Forge Spirit to try and reach the healing board. <laughs> to try and get rid of it. This is, this is their way of stopping the push of DK. But that healing ward really does some heavy work. Like, it's a level 3 healing ward as well. And now they smoke. They move back, they make an army of convergence, and they smoke up. So they're looking for somebody on this bottom lane, but actually they can't. They must be going Roshan then. Yeah, yeah, they're headed towards the pit. Uh, look at look at the bill coming out from Mushi. He's thinking about BKB. This is one of the Please most defensive storm bill I've ever seen in a professional game. It, it can't be, can it? I mean, again, something I brought up early in drafting stage, if you pick a storm and you buy ultra defensive items like Lincoln's for BKB, mm -hmm. then maybe you just should not have picked a storm. And yeah, <laughs> it's this it's not type, it's not his but fight. It's, but it's really weird the obvious two choices, however. Like Lincoln's here at least gives you regeneration, right? And it gives you some kind of immunity. But Okay, Sunstrike's gonna scout the fact that Roshan's being done, but it's already too late. Uh, C9's too far away. They can't do anything about it. Um, but it's the fact that like, he goes for the point pretty stuff, which is gonna eventually get into a Bloodstone, but that'll take some time. And he's building into a BKB halfway through it all. And just to also reiterate, this will not be an Aghanim Scepter, because there is no point to it. Right. So... What the heck? I, I'm just thinking, like, there's more effective items which you could have been selecting. I, I'm wondering if that's also a mindset that Mushi is taking in this game, going, I need to tank up Doom. Maybe I just tank up Doom, because they're going to target me anyway. So if I have Point Booster as well as Ogre Club, I should survive the full duration of Doom. Yeah, I mean, to Doom the to Doom Mushi in the fight is nice if he doesn't have the Aegis, which he does. So maybe not Doom him in the next coming fight. But you also have to Doom the Enigma, because when, when Enigma comes in with BKB, real, Doom is really your only answer to break that black hole. Mm -hmm. So I feel like Bone 7, or excuse me, Ali in this case, playing Doom, He's going to have a lot of pressure on him to land that Doom on the proper target. I think Dooming Naga, for example, to get that kill, prevent that song from coming out, is also key. Unfortunately, there's only one Doom to go around for three or four of our key heroes to, to lock down. For now. For now. Consid considering the support Doombringer currently has higher net worth than the Juggernaut as well as the uh, Storm Spirit, I'm just going to say he might be able to afford a refresher at some point. Let's be honest, Ao is actually the secret carry player for the team. <laughs> he is, he's important, remember? He he's, buys more sometimes. He's so been he... telling everyone at this land event, he's like, remember, I'm important. Look at the game, I'm important, all right? Well, DK is uh, going to be doing a little bit of nice de-warding in, in their own jungle. J just to go back on Mushi's item builds for a bit, I mean, maybe it actually would not even matter in the sense that this game is going to get dragged out for such a long time that, yes, he is going to finish this BKB. And he will finish this uh, oh. Bloodstone. As we see a kill here going against Marana. It was an illusion that uh, finished off that Marana. Radiance That's bottom interesting tower in the sense that attack. Marana has leap. Maybe Pilei died just He's, left into the trees. He, he left into the trees. And, and then illusion. died to the Radiance. I, I have a feeling that there was, there was some initial damage before that gets burning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, he's back at base right now. He wouldn't have TP'd out. But either way, I, I actually didn't even see that one at all. I w I'm wondering if our cameraman even saw that one. No. Nobody saw it. <laughs> as we look over. It didn't happen. Ob obviously, uh, Pilot, doesn't, Pilot doesn't mean as much as Aoi 2000. Well, he, he really does not. <laughs> That's a really rough way to put it. <laughs> yes. As a hero, you mean? Well, as a hero. It's like, not as a person. Uh, their no. only warning is arrow, man. Their only warning is arrow. Bottom lane, Meepo's pinging out some potential here. Now, he's going to Invis Rune in. But at the same time, if he waited just a fraction of a second longer, he would have blew the smoke over on DK. Well, now he wants he to go wants on burning. To he does not want to go on this one. He's going to proof everybody in, but Naga through the sleep out. There were three Meepos coming in, but now Mushi is just like, all right, surprise, coming out from the trees. Sing Sing thought he had a completely over burning, but he bit. They want, to take the fight. they want to take the fight right now. Arrow's going to miss. It's not going to hit anything. There's two observers scouting the entrance of that jungle. Here comes Mushi. Is he going to go on the puck? It looks like not. He's considering multiple targets right now, but no one from C9 is giving him a chance for it. I'm very curious why Sing Sing decided to go in for that, because it's a very easy song TP for burning. There's no way you're going to burst him down. 1,000 health, but he made a play. Immediate song, and he was dead. Maybe he thought all of his Meepos had enough damage with Proof. Again, I, Mushy, I'm not a... Mushy, five seconds on the arrow, and they jump out a long way. Sunstrike's going to be there. The healing ward from Ice 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 is making sure that Mushi is 100% alive. That's the Forge Spirits to try and chase it down again. But they're going to have to back it up. The healing ward is actually 
very annoying in this upcoming up 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 <laughs> team <laughs> fights. Especially when they're using it to scout out and what's going on. It's like the end of the healing was just like I walk up to a tunnel and just mock you. <laughs> You can't kill me during team fights. What hope do you think you have now? Man, Pilot Eye is committing so much to kill off these illusions. He just arrowed a Naga illusion and still had trouble killing it. Level death had to be used by Aoi to finally remove it from the map. But Pilot Eye lost a th like two thirds of his life points for that. He's, he's the man also trying to afford the mech for the team, of all people. So this support do Doombringer inside the jungle refuses to actually go to the mech. We have 2,000 gold, in fact, over on Aoi, with his Blink Dagger as well as his headlines. Um, like here, it looks like Sing Sing's gonna get black on Mystic Flurry. He's gonna come wow. through as well. Sing Sing gonna be dead again. It. Now, back to the point I mentioned earlier, Meeple's one of those heroes I can keep up in terms of split push should you not gank him. And there mm. is a gank squad being led by Mushi. Like, Storm Spirit will find you and will kill you. So, I feel like Cloud Knight going into this mid game is in a corner. They can't keep up with Burning's farm. They can't keep up with the map Dyer's presence because Storm Strait is really the other punch. You know, Storm Strait is going to come in and just get a ton of ganks if Meeple decides to uh, play the split push game uh, uh, next to Burning. So I wonder what Cloud9's game plan is. It feels like they don't really have an option. It kind of feels that at this point that their game plan is Meeple gets fat and win. Like, with all the teams going, how powerful Meepo is. Of course, they don't want to have the 4 case be real, where his KDA is actually 4-4-4 across the board for Meepo. Mm -hmm. That's not a nice position to be in. But I think at the same time, C9 is going to be sitting back there going, in the later portion of the game, Nag is a pain. Storm, Enigma, they're all going to be a bit more of a pain. But if you ever really farmed up Meepo, You've already got yourself a jungle hero who is running at the same level as most of the cores of DK, and with a good doom, anything is possible. Uh, you've got an invoker who has Orchid Force Staff and has almost completed BKB, so he's going to be standing pretty strong during the team fights. And you've got Bone Seven, who's getting more and more initiation as well. Uh, he's got a voice though at the moment. I don't know if this will be your scepter or if he's trying to wait until he has a scythe device. But I'm pretty sure C9's going to. They're, they're going to back themselves in the later portion of this game. They know Naga's going to be an issue but they might just have enough confidence that Meepo can deal with it. So they're going to blow up a Naga illusion. The, the entire Cloud9 team is thinking about smoke, but right now, the, the first priority is they need to push out all of the ways. You, you say that Meepo is farmed, but is he really farmed? Because if you look over the net worth, it's Burning that's leading the, the farm chart. Yeah. If you have a Meepo in a pro game, as we might see a gank going to the top four for the Meepo again, and he's not leading net worth by like four or five thousand gold, it's actually a very under farm and under level Meepo. See, no, normally I'd be 100% with you on this one, but it's just the fact that C9's farm is just so spaced out that it's it's like normally you see greedy Meepos and everyone else is just straight behind them. But the fact you got a lot of farm over on an Invoker and you got a Doombringer right behind them and the Puck's also not too far behind. It looks like they're gonna go for Juggernaut. Yeah, ice, ice, gonna ice, come ice, out. Ice, 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 straight up dead. The Silence looks like they're gonna reserve that Doom. They end up right next to that T2. The question is, can they actually bring it down? Cloud9 does have fairly decent push uh, mm -hmm. with those Forge Spirit as well as the Meepo. Man, I, I love also too the fact that uh, we've seen a lot of European teams have switched from this like pack wolf aura all the time aura creep into Doombringer and to actually turn him in, turning him into Centaur. Yeah, I mean it's a guarantee initiate. Uh, it could be a guarantee AOE initiate as well. We've seen a multiple uh, stop throughout the tournament, and it looks like T2 is going to go down without a fight. Yep. But these kind of victory for an it doesn't really mean much because eventually she is going to claim your tower as well. I, I'm not subscribing that to that one just yet. She's definitely going to claim Pilot Eye's life points multiple times during oh, these games. Pi, is he going to die? <laughs> he's just burning. Oh my They're god, trying. Pi's going to be dead! He's just... The, he, he's had illusion after illusion focusing him down. Burning's realized the easiest way to farm is to look for the Mirana every single time. That's why for all, all our net worth, I'm just counting the Mirana out of this game. Yeah. Like she can't do anything apart from sit at range. Throw an arrow and give Moonlight Shadow to the team. That is literally the use of Pilot Eye right now. Pilot Eye. What a player. He's not important. I'm sorry, Pilot Eye. He's just no as a hero. Important. He's not important. As a, as a person. As a, as a person, he's definitely important. But as a hero in this game, his job is to stay Radiant away from Naga Siren. Because the more times he keeps dying to Naga Siren, the easier it is for burning. Yeah. Like he keeps finding easy money without having to quit his hero or put his team at risk. No black holes and you're already making it a 4v5 engagement. It's okay, once Pi finishes the mech, hopefully he won't die as much. Well, that, that'll help yeah. him, but unfortunately he's going to have a harder time because by the time he's finished mech, we're going to have burning finishing up his heart. Mm -hmm. And then C9 killing off these uh, illusions is going to take a long, long time. And Meepo? Okay. 
I was wondering to see how Sing Sing went for this one. If you go for heart, I remember I was actually, who was I was talking to upstairs about this before, and I was looking at his at his meatball. He said Sing Sing basically goes two different ways. He'll start Aghanims, and then go Blink Dagger, and then he'll either go Scardy, or he'll go into um oh, into thought, into Heart Scythe of Ice. Here comes multiple they're, smokes. They're gonna move in completely opposite directions. Yeah, but they're gonna sneak into Roshan. Ooh. This is so. This is so greedy and so risky. It looks like they're gonna get away with it. Look at Pilot. The courier, though, the courier is flying to the pit, and there's a boy scouting it out. No, okay, it turns away. They're saying, why is this courier going AWOL? It's like, it's like, what? You wanna come over towards Roshan? Then take us the immortal off the back of the Meepo. Insurance is secured. Okay. <laughs> courier almost gives away the, the, the jig. And looks like Cloud9 is going <laughs> to get the Roshan for free. <laughs> the, the other thing to actually mention is that Envy has gone for this particular build of four staff or get into BKB. But he has participated in like zero fight, one fight, maybe defend the tower. I mean, if you want hey, to he's, play he's the... Still a two one. Man, he's still a 2-1-4. He, he is, but if you want to play the, the farm-esque invoker that he is exhibiting in this particular game, a hand of mine has got to be much better, right? Yeah. So I, I'm kind of with you on that one, but I think at the same time, Envy is realizing, and he, I don't know if it's because of like our uh, non orchid game that we had from Clint before, uh, that when you get pressured like this with a Juggernaut, you need to come online a lot faster. So if you try and go into a Hand of Midas here, you may just be delayed a little bit too long that you do nothing during the first towers. And that was what DK's like, Juggernaut pick was all about. It was meant to have all the added towers down by 20 minutes. The healing well, ward was meant to be the enabler, and Ning was meant to be right behind it. Storm was getting pick off slap right and center. Naga was split farming, and Skyrock Mage was just silencing and destroying everybody. That was the mental plan. And, uh, well, Meepo, you've skipped the heart. He's actually just going for Scythe of Ice. I think the Scythe is, a, as we see, a four step forward to kill them, that damn healing ward again, which mm. they don't find. I'm not, I'm, not so sure, I'm not so sure about the Scythe of Ice. I know it's for Mushi, though. And that's the primary person he's looking at. It's Mushi or Lamb. I mean, anybody that you go in, or even a way to actually kill Burning, which before this, they really had no way. Unless you blink Doom and then follow up with just about everybody else. Moonlight Shadow Initiation. Now he's on his way up as Tall Spirit just zips himself away to the ancient area. And Moonlight Shadow will be unsuccessful. Cloud Knight understands that if they play the game the same way they, they keep playing. <laughs> Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Sorry, sorry, I just saw uh, Earthbind on an illusion that was trying to farm up mud golems. Just the ultimate irony. <laughs> yeah, Cloud Knight needs to actually get ganks off to actually have a chance in this game because should should Naga get to do Nagaing things, which Burning is doing for a long time, it's not going to be good. With that said, though, if you look at the go graph, it's it's constantly going to Cloud Knight's way, so. Maybe it, it is the more efficient farming, the more spread out farming for Cloud9 that's uh, a little bit better off for, for, for the game. Well, it's about 4k gold. It's almost 7.5k experience. It's nice. Now, a big part of that is from the Roshan that they snuck, mm -hmm. as well as the tower lead that they do hold. And you gotta imagine these towers eventually tower will get taken by DK. Attack. How annoying the DK is being. Like putting Burning Illusions in so they can block up camp, so Sing Sing's uh, jungle progression is really slow. And also screws up Doom as well. I talk about these guys being really uh, efficient as far as their farming goes. It's really difficult to get like efficient high levels up while you're, while you're basically having your camp being blocked up or pre-farmed up by Naga. Now Sing Sing's gonna be... Oh, Lanimus, take it out. Lanimus blink. Oh no, he actually blinked with it. He needs to pull his people in to even have a chance to survive. Now he does have the Asians immortal. The entire team comes in right now. AoE. He is looking for a doom, but a quick retreat coming out from Lanum and the rest of the team, and they do back off. Yeah. Sing Sing actually made two really quick and good plays after the poof. I like said he used the poof for the farming. I was like, okay, I'm in trouble here. Blinked himself away at the same time Enigma revealed for the first time his blink. So now C9 know that Enigma has a blink dagger with his BKB. But what he then did was like Mystic Flare came out and as opposed to just walking himself through it, he turned himself around to make sure he walked through the, the smallest part of the Mystic Flare area. Yeah, Mushi, so close. Jumps, pilot eye. Well, job was to live, now he's gonna die. Juggernaut, oh, yep. The leap actually pulls the Juggernaut further away from the rest of the team. You know what, consider the fact that he baited out 10 second BKB for Mushi? Mission accomplished, question mark, for, for pilot eye? Die? Yeah. If you're gonna die, die for the greater good, right? I think a, taking a 10 second BKB is part of the greater good. The downside is, though, uh, Aoi did Radiant's use his Doom as well. Yes. Alright, so. Radiant structures are fortified. A little bit of. 
yeah. column A and the column B, and uh, maybe we venture into column C at some point. The column C is your mid tower getting taken down, and that's exactly what Burning is doing right now. Uh, the, the tier one mid is essentially DKs. Oh, Bone Seven blinks in, Dream Call, Owie with the horse stop now, oh. Black Hole from Lanham. The kill is already happened, but they get a revenge kill straight over towards the puck. Owie's being dragged back up again. He still has his BKB to use, and now he goes an Envy as well as Meepo. They arrive on the scene, Sing Sing too low on one Meepo. The Aegis the model will trigger out. Owie hiding in the Moonlight Shadow over in the trees where it's safe. Sing Sing's alive, all of Sing Sing is alive again. And he's just poofing himself away to safety. One Meepo blinks down, the rest of them follow. So, technically a one for one on the trade, but now we see Enigma also jumping in using his 10 second BKB in Black Hole. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's Cloud9 favor in the sense that they only lost the Aegis, whereas DK lost real heroes. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I, I think all DK really want in this game is to extend the game and allow Bernie to, to basically overpower Cloud9. See, see, I don't know if that's even possible. Like, I know he's getting big. And when he has Butterfly, yeah, it's going to be a big problem. But I'm still seeing too many useless heroes over on DK. Burning can't just be a one-man team here. I know that's meant to be like the whole thing of Naga, mm -hmm. but at the same time, look at the net worth, man. The Enigma is the only one who's near the top, is in the top six apart from like Radiant's Naga as well. And you got four attack. heroes from C9 owning that. The Storm Spirit jumps in, and he's still just a BKB point booster. Yeah, that's all he's got. The, the really downside of this build for for. Mushi, I mean, he's going to survive in the fights, which is great, but the downside is that he farms very slowly. You don't have the mana region that an Orchid or Cypher Fly gives you, so yep. you can't spam Remnants, for example. He's using a couple now, but it's, mo it's 2.9 mana region. That's just pitiful for a Storm. So he's going to really fall off, and as an initiator, he's going to die quite a bit because his mana pool is also pitiful in during those fights. Mm -hmm. So I am with you there that uh, the rest of the team is really not going to be able to back up burning. They're going to be food. They're just going to be food. And uh, the primary thing I'm going to search for as well, uh, nice now from Bone 7 on that mid tower. The Naga Illusions did finally claim it. Uh, the one thing I'm going to search for right now from C9 is single target focus. And then I'm going to look for Envy during the fights. They're going to identify the real Naga and kill her off straight away. Yep. So through side the fights, even if she builds a butterfly, the evasion is gone. You'll then have your Orchid, which will possibly also be that way. Okay, you kind of need to combine the two because she's obviously got mana style. So she can break free of the Orchid at least. Not but when it, she's doomed, right? Like, I mean, there's... Uh, yeah, not, yeah. When, not when she's doomed. Like, you can, throw, you can throw everything you've got onto the Naga Siren. And just because of your net worth, You'll be able to find the rest of the DK lineup, no matter what they've got, not what they've really got. Yeah, I, I think what what you said is the key here. Basically, DK is playing a four protect one strategy, and as a Doombringer, as a, a hex carrier, that's all you really want to face against. It doesn't <laughs> matter when they have 20k gold net worth when you just do more hex and they're done. And speaking of hexes, Meepo's got one. If you yep. look over to Bone Seven, he's building on one. If you look at Envy, he's also building on one. Doombringer's there is, not. And Doombringer's got eventually. He's going two. Shivas, I think, at well, this point. Yeah, a, a long roll down the line, he's going to have two Dooms, right? So yeah. we're looking at two Dooms, three Hexes. That's a lot of way, a lot of stuff to throw at Burning. Yeah. Now, DK's making their way into the Radiant Jungle, and with Naga Illusions, they're already scouting out. Pilot Eye, job to survive. He just throws out a fishing arrow. Lanham just walks side by side with it. One good thing that C9 have finally done is put down this Observer Ward. Unfortunately, it's coming a little bit too late. I don't know if, uh, if uh, we're looking at it before, but we had warding from DK, and it was down here basically next to where the Doombringer is, and this one Observer Ward, which is still standing next to the bottom river. Mm -hmm. Now, with this, we saw uh, actually um, Ice Ice Ice. He was farming up these two camps down here. Freely farming it up, keeping the bottom lane pressure towards the tier 2 tower, and keeping C9's attention down on the bottom lane because of that. Yep. He actually made space just by farming and knew when to pull out. When they came to gank him, like, they've actually attempted twice to try and catch him out of the jungle. But he just backs up because he's got the early warning system of the vision. Ironically, normally it's the Naga Radiant that's making space for the rest of the team. <laughs> but Burning is the one that's farming his own jungle. Uh, I like them to actually reverse it because Naga is much harder to gank with the song. Uh, but maybe not this game. Uh, we, since we had just had that Doom plus Hex discussion, Maybe it's the Doom that, or maybe it's the Naga that I really needs to get tucked Ice. away. Do you see it? Yeah, he saw it at the last moment. They walked inside the pit, and Roshan was like literally three seconds away from the spawning. And they walked out at the two second mark. But uh, like 2.5 seconds, Ice 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 saw the animation. So uh, he's gonna go actually. <laughs> Finally, I almost signed the Naga Illusions again. <laughs> just two of them. Just two illusions. 
Um, but yeah, DK's inside the pit. Yeah, it looks like the Rage Aegis will get slain for free. The ping's coming out from, uh, from Envy. He just pinged over the Dire Ancients, though. He didn't ping Roshan. He he, yep. do, he he can't invoke Sunstrike for another another two seconds. Okay, that's that's my question. I, I thought he problem is if, if he also invokes Sunstrike, he can't have his meteorite because it's, it's going to push the forward spirits to the side. Uh, it's too late. DK, they got Rush up, and that's going to go into the storm spirit. Do I think it's now? Is he switching his build? Dyer's top tower. Is Seems like he's attack. going back for a hex. Yeah. Or either that, he's going to just go for the full Pino BKB Lincolns, like just ultra defensive, which. I mean, I guess you started the defensive build, might, might as well continue it. Interesting, though, like, path to that build. Yeah, I <laughs> it's mean... It's definitely unique, Mushi. If you look at casual, the, the casual point booster, like, Storm just wants extra mana and extra health, right? So, in that sense, it, it's not bad. It's just not not good, right? It's, it's not an orchid. <laughs> it's, it's, we'll just cast it as a, as a Mushiism. Yeah. Oh. Bone Seven still trying to force out this top lane. One Naga Illusion is stopping him from doing this. It's it's gonna get really, really frustrating after a while. When you think as a hero you should be able to split push it out, but it's just becoming more and more difficult. The arrows are scouting out the dire area. Now they do see the, the observer ward for the dire side. Pilot I after he dropped that sentry ward down the river. So they're at least restricting the vision here of DK while the farming continues. How is Sing Stay looking for his next time? We've got Blink, Axe, Scythe already up, and he's at two thousand gold. I thought he'd have more, and in fact he does. There's a Reaver over on the Courier. Yep. So, he could buy up, uh, well, he'd just fly out the Reaver for now. Make sure he's took a buyback, but that heart's going to be arriving pretty shortly. He's really fallen behind the Naga. So far behind the Naga. Again, I think Meepo's one of those heroes. Traditionally, you need to keep up and honestly be above the enemy core by a couple thousand gold. Mm. And he, he's really falling behind. And if you look at the Gograph, again, it's, it's tapering down. That, that's generally how all Naga games go. You could keep up with her for a while, but she's like an Energizer Bunny. She just does not stop. <laughs> the difference is, though, the experience graph just keeps getting higher and higher yeah, for I, C9. <laughs> the, th the thing is, the experience graph is a little bit... Uh, it's, it's Pilot Eye who's making the sacrifice. He's, well, it's level, also, he's it's a level 11 Marana 39 minutes in with Mech. It's also Meepo. Uh, Meepo's one of those heroes that get to level 25 insanely quickly thanks to his mechanic, right? But, and if you look yeah. at him, he's, he's 23 almost. The thing is, like, I'm not sure how much experience really favors Meepo and Cloud9. Like, sure, you have a 15k experience lead, but what, do you, or what are you really doing with that experience lead? They're, mm. they're just farming more creeps with it. <laughs> And eventually, DK is going to get their level 16s and level 18s and 25s, so... I'm not sure for Cloud9 right now. It looks like DK with that Aegis, they're feeling confident enough to start breaking Tier 2s. And that's really where the game could go very wrong for Cloud9. Yeah. And leaving some nice aggressive Observer Wards behind with their, with their aggression. C9 just wants the Tier 2 tower on the top. They brought all five heroes up here. It's like they want to try and force DK to fight with delay TPs in. Because they can deal with DK one by one. That C9 lineup is very good at that, but Dyer's you've seen the way DK deal with that. They TP three heroes back inside the base, Dyer's which means they can TP to the front lines. Yep. Without having to have the delay. DK is essentially saying, we're going to prioritize our defending our towers first, because we know we can take your tower first, eventually with Naga. And uh, we're going to just stop your go and take by defending our tower. Point 7 just got an extra side for Zero. this fight. Yeah, the arrows are coming out from the tree line, and Meteorite being used to push the lane out as well. And they leave a, bit, a rather interesting observer ward up on this lane too. They try to see as deep into the DK lineup as possible without having to have their creep wave there all the time. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, does someone have a gem? They got deep water. Was it, that wasn't in range of the tower. Yeah, there's a gem on Skyrath. Yep. Speaking of which, Pilot Guy also has a gem. Not sure if he's the most ideal candidate for that gem, but you know. I don't think he is. He's got to feel important, right? <laughs> is, like, is there someone else who can carry this? Does anyone have a slot? Pilot Eye's got three spare slots look, right now. He's got a mech and a leap. He's fine. <laughs> he can, he can give fine. it to Eternal Envy. <laughs> Eternal Envy has space. But then again, he needs to hold a TP scroll. He does. Which he currently does not have. Come on, boys. Boy Scout rules, Envy. You always meant to have yourself a scroll of Town Teleportation. On all times. Is that really the, the Boy Scout rule? That's that's the Dirty Boy Scout rule. Burning is now max. So, Mark, yeah. on your clocks, uh, 41 and 23 seconds. Yeah. Uh, he has the butterfly. He has the butterfly up and running. And that's with a level 2 defusal blade as well. So he is literally maxed. 
41 thing, minutes though. in. Here's the thing though, if Carline catches him out, he just straight up dies. Yeah. Doom hexes, you know, yeah. Uh, it's really hard to call this game. It really comes down to execution. It's not like the Navi versus the Alliance game where Alliance did you know, give them the Naga. That, that game was very much so textbook. It, it was just a guarantee Alliance victory 25 minutes onward. This game, there is so much initiation from Cloud9 that it really comes down to execution. I'm wondering if DK even want to, like, initiate. Okay, so you're gonna max out burning. And you're still, ooh! Okay, I think that's that's the kicker, right? Okay, you're saying, okay. where's the damage coming in? <laughs> that's the damage. Well, that's the damage. Meepo is not going to be happy about Middle this when he finally finishes his heart. Not, not to mention Aoi, not to mention all of the heroes for C9. The Aghanim, Scepter on the Enigma. We don't have two, we just have one good one. Aoi is the most important player right now for Cloud9. His job, <laughs> his job is to cancel the black hole. Uh, that might be harder. Mushi could even give a Lincoln Sphere recipe, or uh, Lincoln Sphere protection to Lanham. Maybe that's it. Maybe you just. Give me <laughs> this is we have a, you a, have a, a tank support, Enigma. We have a support Storm Spirit. There you now. go. <laughs> Playing middle lane. Well, that would be a nice way of doing it. And he did purchase it. The courier is actually waiting there. He ne oh, because he needs the uh, he needs the last part. Yeah. The Ring of Health? Yeah, he needs the Ring of Health. The hilarious thing is, too, DK, they only have buyback on one hero. It's the Naga Siren. It's the only hero who Radiance middle tower right now worth buyback. Uh, Pilot I just lost half his life to Illusions again. Triggers the mech rather early. He's got the mech, man. Don't worry about it. But look at that. Like, there's no... Like, Meepo right now has everyone back at base. He also didn't finish the heart. Sing Sing's changed his build here. He built the Reaver and has now picked up an ultimate orb. It's going for the Scotty. So the reason that you actually pick up the Reaver Radiance is that Middle it's actually one of the most cost-efficient way to buff up all your other meeples. You don't have to finish the heart because the heart uh, it gives you pure strength and then it gives you the extra health, right? The extra health does yep. not pass along to your other meeples, whereas the pure stats of the strength does pass along. So, so having something like a Vitality boost doesn't split. Doesn't split do across. anything. Whereas having the Reaver itself does a lot for the rest of your meeples. So he doesn't upgrade it. He's actually going to go right next to his next item, which is going to be Eye of Scotty. Smart play. Smart, smart play. So smart. DK is coming down the middle lane. Uh, they've almost got all five there. Mushi is the only one straggling at the back lines. Coming in is our Storm Spirit, who does have the full finish Lincoln Spear. But they're just slowly whittling away down here at the talent. And C9, I'm wondering if Eternal Lamy is going to get to a point where he considers uh, getting like a Maelstrom into Mjolnir. Just so he's able to like alacrity himself up and push out the lanes. Yeah, maybe have to go for bots first to give himself that extra slot. Then go back into it. Yeah, right. yeah, you're right about that. Because what what happens if you have actually no? Because DK, the bush is really like you should see it coming from a long way away. Yeah, and also to be fair, he's gonna be stuck inside his face for the next 20 minutes <laughs> anyway. So maybe you don't need a teleport scroll. Yeah, get get the items which help you deal with the Naga Siren. And if you do have someone like split pushing you out, just let Sing Sing deal with it, and he can sell his treads and go into the BTs. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where the concern really comes in for Cloud9. Again, if you take a peek at that go graph, it's, it's constantly dropping. And that's because DK could farm in essentially all over the map. They're not farming their own jungle right now, which is actually surprising. DK is now going to go back at jungle. Essentially, you just farm every portion of the map. It doesn't matter if the enemy team has five Midas's. You will outfarm them. And Devour? <laughs> and Devour. <laughs> oh, yeah, they've only got one of those Midas's on their lineup. But they're still walking around with three sides of ice. I, I'm really thinking DK is petrified of going high ground. It's like until they have like three cheeses and like, I mean, if only you could have like two Aegises, like, like then you'll consider pushing high ground. It looks like ice, ice, ice. He's actually going to build into uh, into a Maelstrom. So maybe when he also gets the sparkling up. I mean, there's just they no pressure for DK to end this game anytime soon, right? We could just actually yeah. sit here for like the next hour. Like bring in the teas and pastry because we're going to be here for a long while. Especially the tea, as yeah. a castle's best friend, man. Pastry, not so much. Yeah, pastry gets caught up in the chest. Yeah. Pretty sure that's why I was feeling a little bit tricky yesterday. Someone's trying scouting out Roshan, but it's a little bit off. It's uh, another minute and a half until Roshan's going to spawn up. <laughs> oh, 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 reading an analog clock. That's right, I was born in the 80s. How, how is the 80s? The 80s was fun. Nice. Meatloaf was awesome. And I'm not talking about, about the food. Yeah. Just, um, just to establish that one. <laughs> The, I mean, since we do have a lot of time to talk about anything else, <laughs> we yeah. can talk about the 80s and 90s. Uh, let, let's not, man. Let's not. Most people who lived through that era don't remember that era.
kind of like the 60s. It's all a blur. I wasn't around the 60s, I'm not that old. Roshan's going to spawn up in about one minute time from now. And I, I want to see Sing Sing freely move out of his base at the moment. They need something to help him get out. He actually can't. Storm, Storm is going to just find him and then set up a gank. I'm wondering too if he should complete his Guardi before buyback is available for him. Because if he wants buyback, he's got to move out and like farm up another 2,000 gold. But he can buy almost his entire Scardi right now. He's going Manta. Manta huh. He's going Manta. What is is like this many Meepos not enough? I mean, I guess it helps you counter push out. Unless he's trying to break free, like, like, what, Malum? <laughs> no, that's only on, on your core Meepo anyway. I mean, there's Ancient Seal that you could break out of, but again, yeah, you, it's... I think it's just simply for the stats and the illusions. I, having the extra mo mobility actually does not matter when you're stuck in your base. Yeah. This is actually a very curious choice. Sunstrike just scattered at Roshan again, and now he's going to spawn out the second DK actually walk out of the pit. <laughs> They, if, if someone goes in there right now, then they're not a center, but they, they're going to take some time before they check. Yeah, so. the waves of Naga illusion are just endless. So, how do you push out? You can't. Hey, at least Pilot Eye is surviving a little bit longer. Well, until he misses Arrow, then says mistakes are made. Run away, run away! Six is going back. <laughs> Find a, uh, a four Meepo poof to kill off one Naga illusion. And hey, would you believe it? Boom! Feeling good today, man. Yeah, there's that Maelstrom. Yeah. I'm gonna go out and call this say that Cloud9 cannot win the game without having some immense chaos. Because if the game just goes in a very slow and steady pace, DK will out farm. It doesn't matter that you're going up a high ground with two dooms and three hexes. Uh -huh. When you, everybody, for example, have cheeses on the team or they have double buybacks with bots, like with infinite gold, DK could do anything. So Cloud9 needs to create chaos. Where's the Chaos Creator? The the Chaos Creator is Roshan's pit. I'm pretty sure that's like the only oh, Chaos Creator. Oh, if you could creator. get to Roshan pit. Look at, <laughs> look at the Nagas in front of every wave. <laughs> oh, it's difficult. Life is hard, man. DK, you're back inside the pit. This is this will be the uh, the second cheese to drop. Yes. And there's no one's gonna get there in time. And they should even notice who are the ones that are forcing it out. Like the Sun Strike's coming in, but it's the it's ice, ice, ice. Your off lane and your two spots. Bernie's gonna come in here. I don't know what he wants to be in here. He doesn't need, well actually he needs the experience, but he doesn't need the money. Burning is currently going. When Roshan gonna go down now, it's 786 gold per minute. His current gold is reaching 10,000. He's at 9.6k right now. That's not even, not even the highest in the tournament, not impressed. <laughs> Give him time, man. His net worth is 38,000. Actually, he is a full 14. Radiant's above that of the Meepo. Attack. I also want to say, man, I think the matches which I've cast so far, I think I have to be like the caster who's cast the most amount of Dota time as an average in a game. Yeah, the, the Try long Try and games. calculate that one, K-pop. Although, although the, the Vichy gaming did, did bring the average down a bit. <laughs> it's impossible. They don't, they don't actually give casters any kind of credit on that Dota. Yeah. We have uh, the Man of Style now completed over on Sing Sing. He's still got buyback. He's still got buyback, and he's sitting at himself 3,086 life points on himself. Uh, and then on all of his clones, it's uh, 38 with a 3k. More fishing arrows. They, they Actually, well, if only he had a little bit more distance on it, it would have reached Mushi. And Mushi, maybe now he'll finally finish this plus story. <laughs> 15 minutes in, man, he's got 3,000 gold. 15 minute plus on not exactly the, the greatest thing you're searching for. But on the bright side, he wouldn't lose any charges right now with the rate this game's been going. Yeah. Or gain any charges. Yeah, know. that's true. Ice 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 can finish his full Mjolnir as well. He'd have to sacrifice buyback for it. Uh, we get a Perseverance uh, being purchased up from Burning. So Burning is spending his money. And I believe you what, he'll drop the mana style? What are we looking at here? He's gonna Maybe it's a it's a seventh slot. Just can, have a Lincoln's on your courier. Can, can you give yourself the Lincoln's protection yeah, that yeah, you drop yeah, it down? Yeah, exactly. You walk in. Exactly. You give yourself. Oh. It's a refresher. Because you gotta make more illusions, man. Obviously. Wait, that doesn't work. Uh, it actually does not. Work. It doesn't work. <laughs> it's I'm not sure what that's about. Double yeah. song, I guess. Take a racks. They're basically looking to take multiple lanes at once, right? You could have burning, get a lot of attention mid song, and have the team take bot, I guess, and then you song them again. Maybe he's just trying to like buy things for his teammates, if that was only possible. More Thank arrows you. coming out then. Pilot Eye, his job is that he's, he's down in the trees, hiding inside the tree line on the bottom lane, just throwing out arrow after arrow, trying to find out where DK is. Like, he, he fired that arrow from like back here, man. 
Like, back here on the bottom lane. He fired that arrow out. Like, even at max range, he wouldn't be able to reach the hill. I think this is a very good time to give a shout out to all the support players in the world. Because when you sit through a game like this, especially as a Marana, you just actually don't do anything. <laughs> He's not even fighting You can't do anything. Yeah. Like, you, you just like, be like, well, you know, I, I'm just here for the food. I'm a space builder right now. <laughs> oh. Sing Sing is the man that just keeps taking all this farm as uh, concussive shots fly out. And nice little space over four. No, you know, smoke. Are they coming out? Alright, right now there's four heroes from DK pushing the bottom, while uh, Burning is continuously pushing out the mid lane. He's still got 6.5k gold. Mm -hmm. Where did his courier go? It's on the left. It's uh, on the tree mark over here on top. It has a refresh orb right now. Okay. Yeah, it's just hanging out. What the hell is it doing up there? It's like on the, uh, the only lane where there's not a single hero from DK there. Unless it's meant to be there for the B team movement. Alright, Sing Sing's now finally. This is the furthest I've seen him venture out in the last 10 minutes. He's up a long, long way on the top lane. And now the Naga Illusion's gonna come in and he'll be back again. And Mushi keeps the pressure on the bottom lane as well. And, uh, well, are we waiting? We're just gonna count down the next Roshan timer. Please, no. Uh, Enigma, he's at a point, though, he can buy almost his full... Yeah, he's yeah got he it. does. It's a full it. refresher orb. So we have an Akinim's upgraded double black hole with a BKB protection blink dagger initiation. Real talk for a bit. Yep. Doesn't matter if you're doomed. <laughs> right, so I, I think Doom? actually if, if you're Mushi, you, pa you pass a Lincoln charge over to Lamb. Doom has, ref has, du has double refresher as well now. That's we, ha we have double refresher Doom, we have double Enigma Black Hole. <laughs> Well, welcome to the team fight, peoples. Envy is dying on top lane to Naga Illusions in the group wave. He has to get back and heal up. Uh oh, he's straight up there? Oh. No, okay, no, no, okay. no, 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 no. But he's not ready to fight on bottom lane. And this is the problem. Mushi, he goes in on Aoi 2000. The sky right oh, no! there. There's your ultimate coming out from Lanham. Sing Sing's caught in this one too, but only one of his Meepos. They're pooping out, looking for the earth find. The buyback came out from the Doomringer and into the front lines. Lanham is down. Mushi will be the next one. Gotta Cloud go Nine, they've got two. You're right. They have to get back up on top, but there's still the Aegis. Immortal. Envy, you have 140 line points, man. You should not be staying near Mushi. But up on top lane, Burning, he's taken out the tier 3 tower, and the fortification will protect the melee ranks. And then Burning, he's songing, going in towards the mid part of the nice Sing Sing, and where is this black hole? It's on cooldown. He just walks into TP out, because it bought time for the melee ranks to take some damage. The tier 3 tower, they're actually getting no objectives here. For the double song, they do not take an objective, and because he went for the melee ranks, it's gonna heal up to maximum before the next push by DK. It's only a single song, because the, the, the courier is sold by the secret shop. The, the refresher <laughs> has not been used yet, but that is the game plan that DK is gonna do. They're gonna push bottom and have Naga push top simultaneously as the heroes try to cut across and defend. The song's gonna come out. Sure, there's no objective being done right now, but that's because there is a glyph. Uh, there was a glyph being used on Cloud9. How, how are you even meant to use this refresher? Oh, like, in the jungle, looks like they're gonna find one. Emma White's gonna Whoa. die. Chaos has been created. Just a tiny wrinkle in time. Can there be anything done here by Cloud9? Can they just go down mid? Not I, if there's anything Bernie can they, do. They might feel pressured to do so. Now, there's a couple of men. <laughs> Naga Illusion is here and attacking the melee ranks on top. The funny thing is this one Illusion can actually take out most of the creep wave that's about to spawn here. So Sing Sing had to leave a couple of Meepos behind. Sing Sing's going to be the critical man to make sure that these lanes don't get pushed out. Like, you are actually making it more difficult by force staffing the Illusion yeah. to a different side. They could actually, may, may, maybe they can catch a burning. They're pincering. It's a pincer movement. Oh, come on. We got bones there. They have to run across. Where's, where's oh, the TP? Okay. He just used his man. Well, he just used his okay. mirror image. They're doom, coming in. Doom, doom, doom him doom, up. Doom, Owie! Doom, Owie! Doom, that doom, is an enemy. He level deaths him. Where is your doom? Just use the damn thing. Burning. He is doomed up. Star pull as well. All damage out. Burning needs to go down right now. Leap up to pilot eye and doom. That level death. Welcome to the bonus. Okay. So Bottom lane though, DK's coming. They've got to get back. They've got to come back right now. Do they all have TP? That's the question. Do they? Yeah, they all do. Okay, so it is time for Cloud9 to push out, force a buyback, and then, yep. and then do nothing. <laughs> oh, and me. Look how far out he is. And now Juggernaut slices and dices him. And Night Eye Sides will lose his life for this one, but a worthwhile trade. Even though it's now two for one on the board. Oh, they're going to find Mushi. Mushi's oh, hex up right now. Up. He has C Cheese though. And looks Six like things he's coming. Fine. He's blinks on cooldown, Mushi comes out, and now, well, no earth binds, the poofs aren't coming, and it's just a blink away by Bone 7. But all of this is so good for DK, because they don't even have to use a buyback on Naga. She's back in 30 seconds, and there's no way Cloud9 can push across the map in 30 seconds. So, mm -hmm. even though there was a mistake on DK's side, it's not punished. So, Cloud9 is, uh, okay. Again. Pilot Ido, he's getting some farm. 
He's like, baby, it's time for me to get into this game. Wait, let's check his net worth here just to make sure it's all good. Okay, he's gone over 5k, 6.7k. Yeah. It's he's not actually, bad, man. He's almost got as much as the Skyrath mate. You know what I'm going to say? Pile I die, be a man, and, and grab that Maelstrom. And just like, you know what? It's time to, go, to get some creeps. Look at the net worth that we're burning. It's four point almost. It's, it's actually 44,000 net worth, basically, coming up on him. It's a good thing it still tallies what's over on the Courier. His, his gold per minute is actually over 800 now. It's 804 gold per minute. Can I take a moment to wax on poetic about burning? You can be as poetic as you want. So burning is the highest GPM player at TI2. And uh, the rate that he's going, he, he might be the highest GPM player at TI4. Was the only player last year take a game off Alliance, which was undefeated until they got to the grand final, right? With his anti-mage. Often considered as the best carry player of all time in China. Legendary in every right, and uh, this year and last year really uh, kind of extended his player repertoire as a carry player. Not just playing the standard hardcore carry like Naga and Anti Mage, but really the tempo controllers, the pushers. He has really became the most iconic and arguably the most perfect carry player of all time. Uh, if you could even go far as far to say that, and uh, you know we could even keep going on and on because Burning is uh, extending the time for for us to talk about him. Because this game is not going anywhere. I, I think the secret is honestly Burning has himself in his own fantasy league. Who wouldn't, who wouldn't have Burning in his own fantasy league? This, this has to be the reason right now. If you're sitting there going with all your friends going, I've been having real, some real bad weeks in fantasy league. I, just look at Burning's numbers at the end of this one. This guy is walking at almost 1,000 CS. He's 869 CS. Hilariously for the Meepo, he's 505 right now. Hold on though, hold on. Though. Look at the fantasy point on Pilai Die. He's keeping up with Burning. I'm not sure how he's do even doing that. <laughs> Look at the 4.9 on healing. The mech buyer. <laughs> Legit. He's taking it for the team, man. Supports do get the respect according to fantasy points. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, that was the biggest excitement I've heard out of you in the last 20 minutes. That's the only thing to be excited about. Pilot Heights fantasy points. Uh, well, hey, I want to see Sing Sing buy his BT finally, man. Because he's still walking around with treads. And he's got 6,000 gold on him. Now, our next Roshan is underway. Just want to point out too, where... This is number six. This, this is, this is uh, number six. It's the third cheese. All still belong to DK. Now, if we follow the rule of thumb of Sind, the team with the most cheeses wins. Hmm. This, is, this is the rule of Cinder, at least. So, they already have one cheese. In fact, they just they drop the cheese and use the cheese? No, there's, there's actually two cheeses over on the Courier. Now they pass one back over to Lanham. Now there is actually two cheeses. They stack. Yeah, they, they're stacked. I don't think they really want to stack Radiant's it, but now it is stacked. Is I think now, they're trying to keep it split, but unfortunately you, you need hero slots for that. Keep in mind that cheese has a very long cooldown. I don't know the exact amount because I honestly have 40 never seconds. had two cheese it's on 40 me. seconds. Okay, okay. Two, 40 second cooldown on cheeses. Uh, honestly. When was that even a problem? Exactly. Right? <laughs> No, there, there, there is some late game scenario, right? If you're getting bursted down and use cheese once. You just try and throw it over to your carry here. It's like, here, have another cheese. I can't use it. Uh, There's a cooldown. Paradise backing up. Look, look how quickly you went out there. Quickly, observer one. Observer one. In the middle of the pulse, things are the pre -line. Wait, have they got gem? Oh, oh they jump out! How oh, he's out there, he got the Doom over on Lanham. The Doom Ring is going to go down, uh, the Enigma is going to go down straight away, and they move through the Skyrath Mage. A blink out by Aoi after Refresher Orb is used top, too. Top, 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 gotta get back, and gotta <laughs> defend, it does not matter. Envy, he's going the wrong way, he's going to the secret no, shop. he's coming and, to kill. He's nice coming to kill right now. Envy does not want to wait. Now the Dire Courier nice actually just got sniped off. It's the bottom lane. Where Bones is Envy going? Is he making Fort Spear so his team would teleport? I am oh, not sure. He's, he's wanting the Naga. He just thought the Naga Siren will fall back to farm up his own jungle. Envy is, is he's not a man that wants to farm anymore. He's had enough, he doesn't like creeps anymore, and he wants to come out and find heroes. Well, Naga is nowhere near, so... Well, Naga is actually taking out the rage racks on the Swing top back. Miss. On keep, the top racks. Keep in mind that he actually needs to have Force Spirit, because he need to create Force Spirit so his teammates can bot him. Owie, he is so deep in right now. He's still got Tomb. He pops the Sheba's Guard and Juggernaut. I don't know if Einstein's Ice was considering throwing out the ultimate then. Technically, can Einstein's Ice kill off Owie 2000 with his damage? Output. He does have 20 X armor, so perhaps not. Yeah, but also Aoi close. now has 4.1k gold on this tomb. Bring up. Look at Envy. He, he's <laughs> roaming. He's very close to burning. And burning has a gem. Might as well buy gems for your team. That's something you do for he's your team. He's got 15,000 gold. He's got a haste and ghost walk. 
<laughs> and he's on a he's on a hunting mission but can't find anyone. He's put an aggressive this aggressive ward has been up here for almost its full duration for DK. Uh, for, for C9. It's like wait, is this, like, there has to be someone inside their own jungle. I mean that's this is the absolutely correct play that you gotta make, right? If you assume the enemy team is farming the entire map. You, you go farm for this. a gank. Yeah, well, you, you go for a gank in the jungle, and if you don't find it, farm their map. He just BT back again, anyway. Like Envy can sell the four stuff and buy something else. Like he can buy a, he can buy a damage dealing item, and just go to town if he wants to. By the way, we have crossed over the hour mark, <laughs> so uh, remember during games like this, people remain hydrated. Yes, that's important. The C9 just continue to hold. Okay, now they got a chance here. They, they found Burning. Now the ward only just timed out, and Envy runs high, Burning runs low. That's, he's coming that, around, that's, that's, that's the, real, the real Burning. That's the real Burning, but he's not coming close enough that it's putting the ghost feet underneath Burning, and Burning moves pretty damn fast anyway. And what's oh, this line no, being drawn Envy. out? It's been drawn by Meepo saying, yo guys, like, it, these, there's a problem on bottom lane. Don't, don't, don't get Sing Sing start to draw in the game. Like, it's happening from the top to the bottom. Yeah. Now, Pilot Eye, where is your arrow of the century, man? Three seconds until it comes off cooldown, and he's gonna look for an opening. Now, there's a dire observer. There's just, there's never any battle for vision on this place. Oh, Lanham! He goes for Pilot Eye, the sacrificial lamb, since he comes jump. down, he got the hex over on Lanham, and now they jump in! Whoa, the Skyrise Mage evaporates! They keep going on Lanham, the Doom Control! Arrow hits on ice, ice, ice. He's in trouble! He's in a lot of trouble right now, but Burning's up on the top. He's finishing the job on the melee racks. Bo7 comes in. That's he gets a, a dream one. call over on Burning. They need to finish him off. They know which one he is. Unfortunately, the Yulzum is still on cooldown. The TP's coming in. The ramp in melee racks isn't down just yet. Burning back and raise the tip for towers. Hawking it up. He's trying to retreat out. He doesn't know if the Sun's Wreck was coming in too. He's on the sidelines. The melee racks survives with 20 health. <laughs> okay, so the question is again, what can Cloud9 do out of this? Because they just defended. <laughs> but it doesn't matter, right? They have to push mid and force some kind of buyback, and then wait for the next engagement and have a huge ass cooldown timer. I'm also leveling the kookily balls of gems on the bottom lane the courier picks up. Toby, I got bad news. Just look over to the buyback oh, counter for you real fast. I, I mean, I, like, all 10 players have yeah. buyback. It's just, <laughs> like, I, I think DK is in it for really the long haul. Oh, wait, refresh drop can be picked off. Bone 7, Bone 7, the courier value. Blink up, blink up, blink up. It's more to the hyperstones over on here. He'll move up and see the courier. Oh, it's night time. He sees it. He sees Here's the orb. He's range. He's got it. Woo! He's down. He might lose 7. his life. 7.2k net worth on the couriers on the sidelines. Envy's coming over. Mushi. Orchid actually helps trigger the Lincoln Sphere. Deafening Blast a little bit too far away. Side of the fight. Mushi's back up on the high the ground. Blink the forward. seal's there, but in comes Sing Sing. And they evaporate the Skyrath. MMY. He has been sent packing, but he hasn't had time to actually write a postcard. Mushi on the way out. Turns around. He's hexed up. Bones up, he's going to get him. Mushi's down, we've got two buybacks, Skyrath and Naga back alive, the orbs are flying out, the Naga's sleep, it caught out Aoi 2000, Doom off cooldown, arrow. seven seconds, the arrow connected on Mushi, and now they look for Aoi, he got the hook stop, he stops, size, 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 and it's tracks, the Doom off cooldown, but he's down before he can get it off, 100 seconds on the sideline for him, Bone 7 caught up in the middle lane, Mushi right behind it, Bone 7 can't get himself far enough away. The split push is starting to happen. DK, they bought back only two heroes and successfully defend C9. But the fact that they were defending C9 in the first place is a landmark moment. However, though, they bought back on Burning. If you kill Burning once again, then he's gone. He's gone. So th there is a path to victory now for Cloud9. Dyer's he's coming down mid Cloud9 has attack. to buy back as well. They have, again, five hexes, or three hexes and two dooms. So they can actually make this play. Priority number one is Bernie. Kill him and go for the win. Oh, look at Sing Sing. He's trying to get rid of these Naga Illusions. They're all coming for the melee racks now. There is no wave inside the inside the base, so the melee, these Illusions actually do little to nothing. And I remember Burning is really sad about it. He lost his refresher all. Yes. So he, he can't just refresh and go back in again. And looks like Online doesn't even need to buy back, because there's right. not enough pressure coming out from DK. Yeah, they've brought their entire team in here, but the arrows are scouting out for them, almost playing a game of catch I'm there. Very, I'm very surprised that DK is being this aggressive, because if they lose burning, they lose the game. Just wait for next Roshan. Well, next, <laughs> he's wait only for buyback. He's wait only a minute and a half away. He's four and a half minute away from buyback. <laughs> Sing Sing's using his money to buy smoke for the couriers now. Okay, Envy, look at it. Meteorite's down. I'm also really interested to see why these illusions, they're splitting up. We've got Juggernaut Illusions heading for tier 3 tower in the bottom lane. We've got a Creek Wave coming in, and Mushi also. He went on Envy, now Lanham comes in. He's looking for the black hole, but he can't reach anybody. They have to start buying back here, Cloud9. They're going to lose too much map control. And now maybe Sing Sing to the front lines. He's got a Hex over on ice, 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 but Burning puts the sleep on. Now the melee Raxes 
is still up. The tier three towers as well. They're coming out a little bit further. Howie 2000. Oh, on. He's, he's going for money. burning. He's out so far. Can he keep him in position? Now he's in the black hole. Oh. And it's perfectly for the tornado from Envy. It cancels the whole shebang. They've almost got MMY down. Now your black hole goes again. Lannan's pulling him in. Sing Sing. Will he take out the arrow hits from Pilate's eye? Most effective player in the game. Maybe now with a juggernaut jump out. He's looking for the kill. The face ship of Boat 7. He got out. Ice Ice Ice. Six. He's still there in the middle lane. He didn't know. He didn't know at all. He took it to Lightning Proc and will get the kill over on the puck. But the Naga Siren, she is still alive for now. Lanham's back as well after buying back. Roshan spawns up potentially in a grand total of a couple of seconds. Naga buys in the stock. Look at these illusions. Up. They're going to the bar racks again. There's no push. But you can't get out stop. of your base. You Sing Sing got it. Sing yeah, Sing's got it, man. Yeah, you got a meatball. You can actually push as well as defend. But they have spent multiple buybacks. There's no more buybacks left on the side of the Okay, there's, there's, one on Storm. There's, there's one on either side. One belongs to the Storm Spirit. One belongs to the Marana. But this is the gold time if you're Cloud Knight in the sense that there is no more buyback on 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 uh, burning and also lamb it essentially is not a hero because he doesn't have black hole with that said though doom is dead for 40 seconds he doesn't have buyback puck is dead for 40 seconds he also doesn't have buyback i think this is where cloud nine really have to make a gigantic hold or they just lose man here it comes here it comes. Land him to the front line. Now, no black hole for this fight. He's used for Mamushi. Jumps on Pilot Eye. He was the bait here, however. They got the BKB out as well as the spin from Ice Ice Ice. The mid melee racks. It's going to go down. There's too many on the sideline. The bottom tier three tower is also on the sideline, too. Mushi takes up. Eternal Envy trying to battle him out. Takes away at least one quarter of his life voice. But Ice 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 still has Omni Nuts. Omni Slash lets it go. Sing Sing. It's actually the Naga Sleeper stopping all the damage from Ice Ice Ice. But they want the bottom ranks. That's the reason why. Why they're holding them here. Now they go for the top rack. Sing Sing comes up again. They need a kill. They've got the sword spread up in the air. Mushi holding himself away to safety. The melee rack's almost gone. It's a juggernaut illusion, which are killing it off. Mega the bottom Mega rack only has the ranged rack, though. So it's not full megas just yet. Up on top lane. Ice 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 doomed up here by Aoi 2000. He's got Hawks off, but cannot reach up to Ice Ice. Arrow! Ice. Arrow it hits. Ice Ice Ice. No, it didn't. It was too short. It was the cold snap that held him back. Two minutes on the sidelines. Apparently, there's a radiance drop somewhere on the ground. What? I don't know why, but it looks like it's I think for burning it, the illusions are coming in. They want yeah. the range racks. The range racks is about to go no, down! No, no, no. The mega creeps going against oh. Cloud9! Rapier! And Maybe a time for Envy! There's only one direction, you gotta go forward, never look back, and go for the throne. That's four heroes you have to go through, that's one song you have to go through, oh. possibility of refresher song that you have to go through. I just don't know where the Cloud9 have enough time and damage. Man, all they gotta do is pull up the britches, channel Steve Urkel, and just be a man. Go down the middle lane and try and bring down the tier 3 tower. They come as a five-man pack. This isn't even a raxing time to kill. They take tower, they take tower, they take fortress. That is the goal of them right now. If they can kill off the Nagasar and they go for it. Illusions are moving back oh. and forth. Burning's passing between Icy, Radiance, The jump in! Mo7! He's inside the base! Mushi doesn't even crack them too. Sing Sing bringing in the support the Skyrim Mage Ultimate. Really nice. Already got maybe no. Doesn't get one kill but Lanham! Oh, the hole! And got all of C9! Almost the whole enchilada! And Lanham! Now he goes down Sing Sing! Still making the survive this entire fight. Eternal Envy drops the Divine Rampier. Burning! He's on the deck right he's now. He's in the other base! He's looking for it. Where is he? He's going for the tier 4 tower. For the rest of his team, it's Mushi trying to repel C9 while Burning is going for the GG push. How he's blinking himself away back inside the base. Burning, the Koreans are sitting in with his Sokura. Sing Sing, defense on the way in, trying to battle off against him. Burning, do they have enough? How he's now returned to fight too. Sing Sing, a low Meepo. Maybe Burning can die here. How he comes in, Hulk Stomper. Sing Sing's on the sideline. Burning, he's on 400, 500 life points. GG, there's no more defense. How he, not important enough to hold out DK. The game is over. 70 minutes. And this is only game number one of the best of three. Cloud9 versus ZK. Winner wants their winner's bracket advantage in the main event in Key Arena for TI4. Woo! <laughs> Thoughts, Luby? Thoughts? There's no thoughts. I think it's it's all well painted on the on the well, wall. Like, okay, right now the end game graph. What Valve needs to do is also count the couriers that they own because there's an AC that's unaccounted for. There is also a refresher. <laughs>